He's sending a whole squad. Look at this lumber mill workers, boys. Look this. Boom, 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 boom. Welcome to the game number two of the finals of the World Championship 2022 for BFME 1 on the page 2.22. It's going to be the second game of the best of seven series between the green Isengard player Fiji and the white Rohan player Shanks. I mean, basically, the format of this tournament is that we will play random against random. And in the following game, we're going to be swapping the factions in the spots. Remember the last game I was playing Isengard against Rohan. And now it's the other way around. So basically, I'm pretty certain that this map is actually kind of favoring the Rohan faction at the beginning of the game. Just because Rohan has the chance to recruit additional peasants, as you can see, from every single farm we capture. And Isengard has to play this kind of kind of really, really smart. So Uruk Pit in a furnace opening. Unlike me though, Fishy didn't forget about the settlement next to his base. And he's grouping the Uruks in the middle of the map and looking for a war chant. I mean, he can now use them for defense, but also to put pressure on me. I was able to capture this offensively, but remember, in a one-on-one -on -one situation, no swordman can match the strength and the tankiness of the Uruks. Remember what Gimli liked to say, this is not rubble of mindless orcs. These are Urukai, their armor is thick, and their shields broad. Okay, so the plan is to, you know, I like to spam a little bit of peasants, but you need to find the middle ground, because if you over spam yourself, it will delay your stable big time, and that's something you don't really want. You want to still have early Rohirrim, with, you know, you can use them for better harassment, they are way more mobile, and also for creeping. There are a bunch of creeps on this map, and every single one of them is going to be important. So we have Mary back in the business. I mean, Mary is quite underrated. Can actually put so much pressure on your opponent at the beginning of the game. Even in the mid game, you can, you know, still recruit him, put him in a mini map, put him, you know, somewhere on the map, and cloak him to have like a free vision to see what's going on. So all of that for only 100 resources is pretty good. I keep recruiting more peasants, but also building up the stable. My Rokerim is going to be joining the battlefield very, very soon. In the meantime, Isengard creeping this defensively, which is pretty nice. So it gets an additional settlement under this control. And also this farm is going to be taken down. As I'm trying to, you know, protect this with more peasants. But my plan is, I mean, I know I can't protect this forever, but I want to stall the time and deny Isengard from capturing this. So here I forgot about my draft, and that's the reason why Uruks are actually smashing my peasants. Without draft, I mean, I didn't forget about that, but it was on cooldown. Without draft, peasants are the weakest. They are actually as weak as Lumber Mill workers. They can be beaten up by Orcs, no problemo. Draft is essential, because what it does is it gives you 100% more damage and 100% more health. I mean, this is kind of crazy. Imagine, you know, <laughs> with 100% damage, they are not the strongest wardman, imagine without that. I mean, again, the thing what makes this matchup kind of favoring, uh, favorable for the Rohan faction player, in this case for me, is my are my peasants. They are not only impactful in early stages, but also in the mid game until Isengard gets stronger, a stronger army, and eventually also war riders. He has to recruit some berserkers to deal with that, but my plan is just to be annoying and crush his ego. So he was trying to creep this one as well. And I will not let this happen, of course. And my Hobbit here was able to get away. But unfortunately, the Uruks, they got level 2. The plan is to recruit 3 Rohirrim. That's my go-to number when I play with Rohan or Gondor. I like to get either 3 Gondor Knights when I, when I play Gondor. Or 3 Rohirrim with the Rohan faction. Because then I can use at least one of them always for keeping the pressure up. Destroying enemy settlements. And 2, or sometimes only 1, of them for creeping. You need to do stuff simultaneously in this game. The macro is very important. Uh, doing one thing, even when it's great, is not going to be enough to win your games. So you want to be doing more than one thing. So now, as you can see, Isengard is kind of reclaiming map control. He has used industry on his furnace. And I'm creeping. I'm saving up for a big move. I mean, guess my move, guys. <laughs> what am I saving up for? You know, the, the, the reason why I like Rohan Faction and the faction I would recommend to all of you when you want to start playing this game again, you know, you should be starting with the Rohan Faction. Because first of all, I believe it's the most fun faction in the game with the most diversified strategies. You have like countless opportunities with the faction. You can make combos, Rohirrim, Rohirrim Archer, you can rush Gimli, Legolas, Aragorn, and you can also do what I'm about to do with this faction. Very strong lead game faction. Eco is a bit weak, but you can kind of play around it with Eoma leadership. When you get outlaw leadership, you can make money for killing enemy units. 
Beside that, it's a very solid and one of the strongest, if not the strongest faction in the game because it's not weak and has no bad matchup in every single situation. So he went for Lourdes, my opponent. I need to be careful. And losing horses is a big punishment. And again, you can see his pikemen, they can't really achieve too much against my peasants because peasants are hard countering this. And now I will be destroying this settlement because look at my money, boys. What can you do for 5,000 in this game? Quick question. Psst, the buzzer. Ain't mood. We are waiting. There comes the end cancelled. Looks like the ends are going to war. I mean, to be honest, I like ends, dude. I like ends. And remember, I, le I learned this strategy from the Hard AI Rohan. Every single time I used to play against Hard AI, they used to spam ends on me. It was so annoying. I want to share my passion about the ends, my love about the ends, Kappa, with my opponent. The ends, the thing is, it's very underrated. Because by the time we, we don't do anything, right? We don't go for heroes, we don't go for armory, we pretty much rush to 5000 after the Rohirrim. Be careful. I was able to save all the Rohirrim, that's good. And um, that means, in normal cases, your opponent won't have the fire arrows. He won't. Right? And without the fire arrows, it's quite tough. Look how many workers is bringing to the table. Because if you don't know, the Lambert Mill workers are very good. Very good against ants. So there comes the last march. But of course, there can't be a last march without the hero tribute. Trample, trample, trample. Okay, boys, look at them. You wanna, you wanna fight me? I mean, it's like deja vu from the films, guys. Am I right? They're destroying Isengard. I mean, yeah, they didn't destroy Orphan in the films, but, you know, here they can. In the films, they couldn't. Look, he's sending a whole squad of Lumber Mill workers <laughs> to deal with my ends. That's crazy. In the meantime, again, very important, you want to take care of the map, you know, map control. When you do the one thing and he's forced to defend this, you can, you know, use his momentum to get more map control, destroy his Lumber Mills, cut his eco. Look his damage. You see, they are almost one shooting my end. It's kind of crazy. Look, they just killed an end here. I had to heal because I want to destroy the Uruk pit. Now, you might be saying, you have a chance. Why are you saving or healing units or wasting your heal on units that are only there for a limited amount of time? That's a very good question. It's not about the time they have remaining. It's about the stuff you can get done with them before they leave. And destroying a Uruk pit level 3 is very rewarding. Because we killed the Orthanc, it means he cannot build anything inside the bees until this is fully built up. And that also means he cannot produce any more units. He has only resource buildings left in the bees, which creates an enormous momentum for me. And Isengard has almost 5,000. So he's going to go for Saruman eventually. And yeah. So he's defending. He has not much left on the field. He has a settlement here. I forgot totally about the settlement, but I have an outpost and I'm about to buy shields. Horseman shields. Horseman shields making us tanky against arrows. And Tribute got crippled. Look at this Lumber Mill workers, boys. Dude, it's so... Again, I keep saying it because it's important. For a game that was made in 2004. This game was so ahead of its time, man. Let me know in the comment section down below if you agree with me, guys. Like, look at the graphics, man. I mean, yeah, we have improved a couple of them. But still, you know, it's a game from 2004. It's unbelievable. He's using Warchant. I'm bringing more peasants. The plan is to fire, you know, find power points and keep him checked. Put up the pressure that means he can never, ever leave this area. He has to perma defend. Defending all alone is not going to win you the game. Yes, he's getting power points. He's almost six power points after the industry, which means he's only one power point away from the freezing rain, which will not be very useful against me. Because I'm not planning to get any heroes that give me upgrades or leadership. And I didn't demolish the end mood. I keep recruiting more ends. Because I believe they can still get stuff done. I have seen in the base from my opponent that he didn't even have armory yet. I know his money is kind of messed up a little bit. And I want to use this, you know. There is not a golden strategy that always works in this game. You need to kind of be situational and adaptive to what is given to you in the game, you know. The circumstances. They can be different in every single game. So making or saying this is the go-to strat against this faction is just not the right call can depend on every situation so the one thing you have to do is keep rushing your opponent keep rushing 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 and he's gonna fireball here but it's okay now i'm trying to just fish power points each tower he doesn't demolish will give me power points okay he doesn't not he doesn't demolish this one 
I'm gonna get a whole half a level just from this. You wanna dodge the wizard. His fireball is the only range ability from this uh, wizard. And people, they are always too scared when they see a Saruman in the base. Yes, he can be annoying and hard to deal with, but he can't deal with three, four Rohirrim veterans at the same time. So you can ignore him in some way, you know, and then keep doing your stuff. stuff. So he was trying to destroy my end mode, but the ends saying, nah, 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 don't touch the end mode. You already was destroying the Fangon forest, Uruks, and you are not allowed to touch my tra -la -la -la. Okay, so in the meantime, I'm going for the heavy armor and forge blades and Venna. I mean, this tournament was actually quite fun for me. It's still not over, by the way. And we have still the Grand Finals in front of us in the following days. Also, the Rise of the Witch King tournament is about to be finished. After this, we will also host a 2v2 tournament, maybe in December or in January. But the most important update is going to be the version 3.0, which will come along with a new launcher. It was a beautiful blast from him, by the way. I lost a whole battalion, but it's okay. It will come, uh, it will come in December, around Christmas time, with a launcher. And also, uh, you know, it will be a next level launcher, okay? It will give you a chance to download the whole game in two minutes. The updates will be faster. You will have so many in-game settings, options you can do with the launcher. The Evil Campaign Rework will also be released with the version 3.0. So December is going to be a big month for the BFM community. Stay tuned, boys. And give us feedback once you play the Evil Campaign. It's going to be mind-blowing difficulty, the new animations, and also a bunch of new hero heroes we added just for the campaign. So because, you know, the evil campaign, as you know, was kind of boring in some way. And, you know, especially with Mortal Faction, you couldn't have any fun. Uh, you was always playing with Isengard. Admit that in the comment section down below. You know, tell me the truth. Because everybody was legit playing only with Isengard. Mortal was quite boring with no heroes. And it's going to be changed in the version 3.0. So stay tuned. And I keep recruiting more ends, by the way. <laughs> Just crippled this. His uh, Lourdes is level 5, so the one thing I want to make sure is that Isengard doesn't get into the late game. With Lourdes level 5 and Saruman leadership, it's going to be too strong for me. Rain is going to counter all my leadership, which I really don't have right now, but I might have later on. So I will keep recruiting more ends, and I even hit the end summon. So the plan is to just have ends over and over and over again, okay? So my opponent, Fishy, will start hating ends after this game. He doesn't even have heavy armor yet, I think. He has the, he has the up, upgrade purchase, but he's kind of poor because he has to recruit more units. Another rush is happening. You can see I don't let him any time to recover. Keep rushing all the time. Once you rush with the Rohirrim, you bring up the ends. And this way you can have like a circle, circle around 24-7 pressure, okay? Lourdes hitting level 6, so that's good for him. It's now the pillage. This guy's fireball on cooldown because he was using it on my Rohirrim. And now there comes the Ent army, boys. One, two, three, four Ents with the daddy of the Ents, the father of the Ents, the boss of the Ents, three beard. And he has to, he has to bring more crossbowmen to the table. But I have just too many. And if you burn them, they will rage, okay? They will become angry. Watch this, boys. Look, he's burning one of them. Yeah, he's killing him. Now my ends are enraging. So I cannot trample. Watch this. Look this. Boom, 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 boom. And whenever I do that, my power points are rising to the sky, okay? Look, he lost all his army. Yes, I'm losing army too. But I want you to understand. If you are the one who's controlling the map, right? Then your money, you can exchange money for his money. Because it will reward you in long terms. I have more eco than him. I have legit 90% of the map. I have double outposts now. I have pretty much every single settlement besides this two. So I'm in a phenomenal spot. Tribute got crippled by Lord, so he can't move. But it's okay. Every arrow tower is shooting at him. He's still absorbing pressure. I saw Lord's being 1 HP. And I will touch him a few times and he's gonna be killed. Yes, the Saruman was trying to save him, but he won't be able to. Now I can just disengage again and keep doing this. Lord's, he has to revive him for 1100. And also he was level 6, so you need to invest 2 minutes, which is a long time. And you do this, you know, keep up the pressure. I know it's easier said than done, but practice makes perfect. So, you can, if I can do it with, tw with 32 years old, you can do that as well, boys. I trust on you. Fireball, my end. Look here, it's important to get away. And again, don't be scared of the pikemen. Keep pressuring up all the time. 
but don't lose a whole battalion. Even if when you lose one or two, it doesn't really matter. As long as you can save at least one unit. That's the most important part. So again, keep pressuring from the top side too. Look, I just I also had uh, you know bought the fire rose on my from my archer range level two. And I keep recruiting, bringing back Tribute into the business, you know, recruiting more and more ends. And to be honest, they are not even that expensive because only 1200 each. So a Rohirrim with upgrades wouldn't be cheaper than an end. But the stuff that an that, that end can do, especially the tankiness from an end against arrows, is kind of crazy when you, if you ask me. They deal crazy amount of damage, they burst and one shot everything they go through. And also they basically are immune to damage from all these towers, you know. Because their ends, their you know the the arrows don't hurt them unless you have fire arrows. So not big, not many counters, and still very very strong. Recruit time twenty seconds too, so you can spam those ends. Look at them, look at them go. Come, my friends, the ends are going to war. Did I just like the nostalgic feeling about this? Tell me that you don't love this, boys. He's gonna steal my... He stole all of them, by the way. All of them. Can you guys imagine this? But I'm just going ham, you know. I have, like, horses. And smashing your bees. Treebeard is burning. Smart move from him to fireball my Treebeard. But I just gotta trample them all. And he, I have too many. And look, my power points are rising to the sky. Isengard is up to 12 power points. Can you imagine how many power points I gathered just with the end spam? Just by trampling down the units and killing lords and his structures? That's how we do it, boys. Do unexpected stuff sometimes. This is not a meta build. This is not something you see every game or you will see every game. But it is something your opponent won't expect you to do. And this has like the surprise effect that can get you a very beautiful, if you ask me, and a great W. Look at this. Ends go. <laughs> Look at them go. Oh. The Firebolt might be able to save the Orphan for now. I have no heal. Uh, but I have EOD. So, he doesn't have many units remaining on the field anymore. His eco is messed up. He has not even 2,000. If you ask me, I have also no money, but I'm using my money constantly to recruit more units, making more Rohirrim, and preparing for the final push. You don't want to use EOD blindless, blindly. You want to combine this with a big push, so you want to make sure that you can get the maximum out of the situation when you summon the EOD. So, he plan is here to summon EOD, kill heroes, and finish off the beast, okay? Kill Saruman, kill the remaining pikemen, Go ham and that's it boys. I hope you enjoyed this game. It was the game number two. I won't upload the other games because they were kind of boring. The final score of this was 4-0 for me. I'm in the grand finals now. I hope you guys are proud of me. And you know, if you want to support me, you can do that by leaving a like to this video, subscribing for more videos like this in the future. And also, you can follow me on my Twitch channel, Twitch TV slash Beyond Sanders. You can find the link for that in the description down below. I would love to meet you in my next live stream. Until then, Take care of yourself, keep hitting like a truck, and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.